Uh, welcome everybody and Chris Seich from Austria. My name is Peter Paul Kirschner and I want to show you a team sample and explain what you can find in this sample. Uh, let's ask Megan if she has time to give me some inspirations for the, um, for the presentation. Uh, it's super cool, she has time and to make a presentation, what this is, let's start with a mind web. So I go to add to tab and add a tab in this uh, one, I add the Teams mind map local. And then I have a configuration screen, this pop-up, let's save it. And here we are, we have a mind map, but currently I'm alone in this uh, mind map. So what uh, Megan uh, on his, her screen, um, she had the information on the chat that a new tab uh, was insert and as soon as she clicks on the screen we have, uh, she is also here on the bottom, you can see that now we have two attendees in this mind map. So let's play uh, around, uh, let's edit the welcome and we are talking about an app, save it. And on the other side, I can also um, add a child node. Let's call it mind map and save it. And as soon as I save it, the change is automatically replicated to the other side. So Megan can also add another child. Um, Megan, oh, I should speak about the data, data model. Okay, I can do it. So in the data model, I have two objects, I have nodes and I have connections. At least it needs one node for a mind map and the connection is optional. Um, in the code, it looks like that we have an ID, everything needs an ID, then I have a text and then I have the position X and Y, uh, where it is in the mind map. And the connection uh, and the nodes are connected over connections and I have here a source ID and a target ID. So in the data model, when I look at it, it would like this uh, small sample that I have an app, I have a mind map, and they are connected with one connection. So the rendering, hmm, when I think about the rendering, I have in my mind there are three options. I can use a canvas, I can, can use plain HTML or SVG images. In this sample, as I said, I use uh, SVG images because there's a great library, uh, open source library outside. It's a D3GS library and with some uh, parts, it's really easy to use and to draw such a mind map. So then we have a part, uh, how does communication works? When I use the mind map directly in Teams um, and I, for me, Megan and I, then we have two separate uh, mind maps. This is not very practical uh, because then Megan draws their own mind map and me is drawing my own mind map. So we have to connect these uh, different instances together. And so I tried uh, it with a fluid framework. Uh, the nice thing is I don't need a server. I go to the Asia environment and say, uh, create a new fluid relay service and this was it. So how does it work? When I have a property and I change the property A from one to two, then I have here change and the fluid framework um, will make an operation to the fluid relay service. So we have an operation there, uh, the operation will be applied at the fluid, fluid service and the operation will be replicated to the old clients. And my client who was the trigger gets the operation also and gets an acknowledge. So, and then we have to apply the um, change on our state and yeah, we have it in sync. So, but now our structure looks like this but I explained such a structure, so I have to flat the object. Uh, in the code, it looks like that we have a fluid data model. You find it in the file uh, mind map fluid uh, model TypeScript. And in the top, you can see I have here the um, shared map of the distributed data structure, what uh, fluid frameworks provide me. And on the bottom, 
there is a code part where a change uh, will be applied. I have no generic flat method uh, used in the sample. I make it by hand and you see I have a prefix, then I use the node ID and then the value. So with this structure, it is possible that uh, the that I change the title and Megan change the position. And so um, this would work. So um, this model consumes also the events from the fluid relay. These events are defined in the fluid framework. Each distributed data model has a predefined set of events. Here we have uh, the value changed event and member added or member removed. So, and before I was talking about that we get that acknowledge and also in the value changed, we get uh, the acknowledge is a Boolean value. This means local. So on the other hand, I have a mind map, the mind map data, data model. On the top, I get all my nodes and connections and I bind it directly uh, to the control. So now I have two models and they look like completely different. And now I have um, the challenge to make this, uh, that these two models work together. In this sample, I use the store. In the store, um, I store the complete state of the mind map. When we take a deeper look, I, uh, you can find in the fluid model that I get the value changed and this emits the model changed event to the door and this will call the dispatcher. So here it is the dispatcher and the model change event is coming and the reducer applies the change to the store and so this is the mechanic mechanism behind how this uh, the um, uh, is in sync. And the other way is when um, the model is changed from the mind map, it also calls uh, a reducer and a dispatcher, as uh, a dispatcher and then the reducer to apply the change to the fluid uh, service. In the fluid service, uh, we are talking about a container. Each container is a, is a session. And to get such a session, you have to define a schema and then you have to attach it. And as soon as you attach it, you get the container ID. And when you want to connect to a container, you need also this ID uh, that uh, the other clients get in the same room. So now the challenge was um, the first person who adds the tab to a chat group, channel, or meeting has to tell each other that the same. I had to tell the container ID to all other people. And then I was thinking about how to solve it. Yeah, I can use a, a database um, to store the information, or I can store uh, this container ID in the SharePoint. Uh, but when I use it in the SharePoint, I have a chat or a meeting that I can store in the OneDrive list or the property to the back of the OneDrive. And when I use a channel, I can store it in also in a SharePoint list or the property to be back. But then the information are depend are stored in different location depending on which location uh, I use the tab where I can write the graph extensions. But I was searching for a um, easier way to store such information and they want to store it directly in teams. And when you look at the manifest, you have the options uh, configuration tabs. And on the configuration tab, you can say, uh, I want to use this pop-up. And the cool thing on this pop-up is you have a save button. And uh, as soon as the save button is hit, you can execute some code. And the registration is really easy. Uh, you register your safe handler. And in my uh, thing, I create uh, on the safe handler the container of the fluid uh, framework. And then I manipulate the content URL and give the container ID as a query string. Um, and to pass the parameter from the Query string is an easy job in HTML. And the main important thing is to say 
teams uh, that uh, we are successfully finished. If you forget it, you are, you are waiting and waiting for a while. Um, so everybody is in the same uh, container and we can uh, throw a mind map together. But the next thing is, was the startup dev experience. Uh, the problem is uh, for a developer, it's very useful to hit one button and say the complete application starts. We learned it from the graph. Uh, from the team's toolkit, uh, hit play, the side loading will be done automatically. Uh, it's really nice. And in this sample, I need an additional service in the fluid relay service. Um, and to start it every time with a command is sometimes boring. Uh, so I added in the task JSON an additional uh, task and run the command npn run fluid. It's defined that we can start the Fluid Framework Asia local service. And to add it in the uh, Teams toolkit, we have only to add in the start application an additional uh, depends on, and voila, it's finished. We have now in the task um, banner, or the terminal of uh, Visual Studio Code, the front end task, and uh, I have here the back end task. Uh, from the fluid relay. So, the last word, uh, please try it, give feedback. It's only a sample, it's not a product. Uh, you can find a lot of bugs inside. Uh, you will find a lot of debug information in the code and every kind of feedback is welcome. Thank you.